once again, I'm Extra Life, and this is my new drum kit. As you can see, it's quite compact. I would even call it miniature. Although, compared to some other miniature kits that you can get nowadays, it's more or less full size. This kind of compact or jazz or student arrangement uh, is something that came to me uh, when I started getting more into older music from the 70s and 60s and realized that uh, a lot of that music really is just on three elements, the kick, the hi-hat, and the snare. And I think just being able to play a simple groove on these three elements is all I really want out of my drum sound. That's sort of my goal is to be able to play a simple groove really well. And that's a hard thing to do, and I'm not there yet. Now that I have these pieces, I feel like it's going to be a lot easier to get there. Although owning a whole drum kit is very intimidating, owning three pieces is much less intimidating. And that kind of got cemented in my mind uh, when I started listening more to a couple of drummers who I really, really love. And those are Nate Smith of many, many projects, most recently of the Wolfpack side project, Fearless Flyers. And also Greg Saunier of Deerhoof, who plays on a number of different arrangements, but most commonly just a kick, a snare, and a cymbal. One major advantage to a kit this small is that it is compact, it doesn't take up a lot of room. I'm in a shared rehearsal space right now, I don't have room to keep this whole kit set up. Uh, but it is actually quite quick to set up. I time myself today, and it took about five minutes to get everything put together. Getting it set up to record like I have it today is a little bit more challenging, it took me about 10 minutes to do. But I'll talk more about my recording setup in a future video because I haven't really dialed it in just yet. <laughs> This kit obviously is sort of a jelly bean kit. It was cobbled together from a couple different pieces that I found locally and some stuff that I found online. Uh, the kick is a late 60s sonar teardrop kick. Um, and this just popped up on Craigslist and was the first piece of the kit that I bought. It's in really good condition. Not all of the parts are original, but for something this old, uh, really can't complain about it. It sounds great. And I love the way it looks. This beautiful ruby tangle finish on it that they don't make anymore. The snare drum is a, another classic. This is a Ludwig Acrylite. This is what used to be a student model. The Acrylite sort of was introduced as a low cost alternative to the Superphonic, but people pretty quickly realized that it is a phenomenal sounding drum. Uh, and it's been one of the mainstays of recording studios for 50 years or so. Uh, this edition came out in the 90s, and uh, it comes in this wonderful Black Galaxy sparkle finish. And it's an aluminum shell snare drum that has this bead down the center of the shell that kind of restrains some of the overtones, or so I'm told. Symbols are also a little bit vintage, in fact, very vintage, as you can probably tell. Both of these are Peisty Formula 602. These are the 14 inch medium hi hats, and this is the 20 inch medium ride. Getting into vintage drums was not really my original plan when I sort of started planning out this kit, but the more I did research and the more I kind of looked at what was available, uh, it really became clear to me that vintage instruments are, in the case of drums, oftentimes the most readily available, the most affordable, and the best sounding. Which seems crazy, because if you're familiar at all with vintage musical instruments, 
uh, you've probably had the experience of walking into a guitar store, seeing a beautiful Stratocaster, and then finding it out it costs as much as a mid-sized sedan. But in the case of drums, I mean, I think uh, because they get hit on with sticks, maybe they don't last quite as long, and so vintage drums are not as in demand. I'm not really sure, but at any rate, you can get really good prices on vintage hardware, uh, even really high quality stuff that is still in production. So I keep saying that used vintage drums are more affordable than new ones. Is that really true? Well, let's put some numbers to it. The Acrolyte has recently been reintroduced. There's sort of a vintage renaissance going on in drums, and you can get the 5x14 for $449. This is the listing for the snare drum I bought, $200 plus shipping. It needed new heads because, as you can see, it came with the original Ludwig heads, came with a hard shell case, and uh, this is about the going price for a used Acrolyte. Uh, over here at Guitar Center, an even older one from the 70s with this amazing matte aluminum finish on it, going for the same price. Symbols, similar story, Peisty 602 Ride, $505 new. If we look on Reverb, sort by price, you can get something in pretty good condition for about $200, a little bit better maybe for about $250, and that is what I paid on Craigslist. I got a Peisty Ride for about $250. Formula 602 Medium Hi-Hats, now on sale new from Guitar Center for $570 for the pair. Similar story, spent a little bit of more money, obviously it's two cymbals, uh, and this pair was in absolutely flawless shape. Uh, I love the way the patina looks on these old cymbals. You can get some a little bit cheaper maybe. Here is a set for $300. They're not cheap by any means, but you can save yourself a lot of money by buying vintage cymbals in good condition. This Sonar Vintage Series kick drum costs about $1,500, and these have rave reviews. You might be able to find a comparable kick drum for less. Sonar drums have always been very expensive, but that is what they have this price currently. Buying a used kick drum really is luck of the draw, because you really do have to find it locally. It's uh, sort of a pain to get these things shipped around. I paid $200 locally for that Sonar kick drum, which is, let's be honest, a phenomenal deal. So altogether that comes out to $3,023, or about three times as much as I spent on the drums. Now, you can certainly get a brand new drum set for a whole lot less than $3,000, and some of them are even quite good. They'll probably have more components even than my little miniature kit. But I think this shows that vintage drums are quite competitive when it comes to quality, when it comes to price, and when it comes to availability compared to high quality new drums. <laughs> There you have it. That is my new miniature drum kit. It's been a joy to put together. It is super fun to play. And every day that I practice with it, I feel like I'm getting a little bit better, although I still have quite a long ways to go. But I would love to hear your feedback on how it sounds, how this recording came out, what in my playing needs work. I know timing is a big thing, dynamic control. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and a huge thanks to everyone who has supported me over on Patreon. You can get early access to all of my new videos at patreon.com slash extra life, as well as a little bit of bonus content. So thank you to all of you who have joined. And if you're interested, click the link down in the description. I have been Extra Life. You have been wonderful. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.